Hello, greetings, hi there, welcome to the channel. If you happen to be a Zelda fan, I have a treat for you today. Or I guess, or in general, if you if you dig life lessons, I probably got a treat for you today. We're going to be talking about the one, the only, Cass's mentor. You know, the bard that's so prolific that this character has their own character model, but wait, they don't. Doesn't matter, still a good lesson to get from them. Anyways, the real treasure here is gonna be the lesson that we get from it, or at least the lesson that I give you from it. So picture this, you're minding your own business, you're singing your songs, you're spreading the joy to all the travelers you meet, and then she walks in. Princess, Princess Zelda, the embodiment of grace, beauty, and wisdom. I mean, she is, you know, Triforce of Wisdom, but anyways, you are smitten. In fact, you've got it so bad, you've used the word smitten. You're in love, my friend, and there's no turning back. But here's the kicker. She's just not into you. In fact, she's got her eyes set on someone else. The hero, Link. Yep, the very same guy you're singing about. Yeah, it's kind of... It feels a little cuckish, but you know, it is what it is. Talk about a bummer though, right? But listen, here's where it gets interesting. The story itself kind of smooths it over. It's like, ah, well, you know, he's the hero of legend, so... Cass's mentor gets over it, you know, we call it a day, fights, Link gets his ass handed to him, you know how the story goes. But there's like three lessons or so that I really want you to get from this that the story doesn't really flesh out. And granted, I mean, it's kind of like who cares because it's a character that they didn't even give a character model to. Like, I mean, hell, even the king got a, like as far as all the dead so people, even the king got a character model, but there's not really too much reason for them to flesh him out because he's just a background character like so many other ones. But I figured that that story always rubbed me the wrong way, but I guess it rubbed me the wrong way. There's a couple of lessons that you can get from it, and we're going to go over them right now. The first lesson I want you to get from this is don't chase after somebody that clearly doesn't want you. I don't know you. I don't know that you exist. Hopefully I'll know you exist in the future. And if so, hey, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. I'm doing fine and uh, nice to meet you. But, <laughs> but anyways, don't chase after somebody that doesn't care or know that you exist or who knows, they may care, but if they're not into you, I don't do it to yourself. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that you're worth more than chasing after somebody that's just not even bothered about you. And they have their eyes set on somebody else. At the end of the day, I know it's a very cliche statement. People are gonna do what they're gonna do. Don't chase after somebody that's just not into you, especially when you can offer probably so much more and you can find someone else that's far better for you because it's very easy to get caught up in the idea of someone and forget about everything else that's going around you. That's It's really not healthy. And not to say that that's really what Cass did. They don't go into detail on him too much, but I'm kind of assuming that he did. He should have understood the fact that Zelda was never going to be his and he really should have just moved on eventually he did but it just took a while but i think he needed to move on through self-discovery rather than to just be fixated on her and don't be that guy or girl who's just constantly talking about or just focused or fixated on one person admit when it's time to move on it's just time to move on like there's a, a whole world out there now granted hyrule they never specified how big Hyrule is. Like, I don't know how big the world is. Maybe when he, <laughs> if Cass's mentor gets to the edge like Link, uh, he can't go any further. Shit, maybe he can't go any further. But I mean, there's a lot of baddies in, in Hyrule, to my knowledge. Whether it be in the past, the present, or the future, there's a lot of baddies. I mean, you can just, just go Gerudo. I mean, you, you really can't go wrong with that. A washboard mommy with abs? I mean, come on come on but i'm being serious though even though i am being kind of jokey too yeah you should really get somebody that will actually appreciate you that leads us into the next lesson yeah somebody who will actually appreciate you if you can't find someone who will appreciate you don't sweat it the right person is out there like seriously there's a lot of people out there and they're probably looking for someone like you but you've got to be patient and in the meantime you should work on yourself which takes us into the next lesson you should work on yourself like let the universe do its thing and eventually the right person will come into your life don't fixate on somebody else that's just not just bothered by you it's a trap that a lot of us fall into especially when we're kiddos or teenagers or whatever you know your hormones get the best of you it's like ah oh, shit i really like you get the rose colored glasses you hear the the music in the background you may hear some k-pop music in the background depending on what generation you are who knows 
But anyways, yeah, it just you really give it to yourself. You really paint this picture of them. And more often than not, um, that picture isn't quite what you think it is. It's just the picture that you've given to yourself about that person that you're really into. But taking us into lesson number three, self-improvement. If somebody's not into you, that's cool. Do everything you were going to do as if that person did not exist. That is a lesson that we can get from that. Don't let your affection for somebody and how they view and perceive you define you. Take something from that. If somebody's not into you in particularly, hey, it is what it is. Pick up some new skills. Get some stuff that's like, oh, well, this person's really interesting. Oh, this person's into philosophy or this person can really cook. This person's a really good artist. This person's a really good musician. They're a good this. They're a good that. You know, whatever the case may be. If there's something that you're particularly passionate about, try to be really good at it. I'm not saying to kill yourself to try to do it. Probably should have used a different choice of words. Eh, what are you going to do? We're deep in now. But yeah, don't run yourself into the dirt to try to just like, I have to be the best, unless you want to, as far as like being the best or whatever. Just do something that you're passionate about. Pursue that passion. Get really good at it. Just keep being at the risk of sounding like an after school special. Just keep being you. Keep doing what you're doing. If there's something that you're already doing that you already excel at, keep doing it. Someone will eventually come along. Just make yourself available for it or open enough for, to get somebody to talk to you because you know a lot of people, they're pretty shy nowadays really so you kind of have to make yourself open and inviting enough for somebody to actually come talk to you it's all just about raising probability keep working on your thing find somebody that will appreciate you for you and there you go don't do like Cass's mentor or don't do like those people in general that'll just chase after somebody that just can't be bothered to think about them it's just it's not fair to yourself I think that's what that's truly what bothered me the most about the little Cass's mentor thing. I have a very interesting way of thinking about things where people just like went on. It's like, ah, Cass mentor. Eh, who cares? You know, and that's really mainly what the story is meant to be, because on paper, technically, this character doesn't really exist. They exist in a story, but they don't really exist, exist within the, the just there's no concern for this character. It's just a one off character, which is fine. But something always rubbed me wrong about that whole Cass's mentor was in love with Zelda. And it's one of those time honored traditions to where there's somebody else that's in love with one of the, the at least adjacent main characters, if not the main character. I mean, hell, it is her name as far as the game is concerned. But that person ends up being in love with the stereotypical uh, protagonist. It's so it's really boring to me. I kind of hate that, really. I know that's probably what the general populace usually likes is the whole I want my one true pairings to get together generic protagonist with protagonist it's so it's so boring to me I need a left field I need somebody completely left field to get with one of the main characters but anyways that aside it's just that story in particular rubbed me the wrong way but yeah self-improvement don't fixate on someone that is not into you and find someone who will appreciate you and there you have it the love story of Cass's mentor in breath of the wild three lessons that you can learn from remember can't stress this enough work on yourself don't fixate on someone who's not into you and find someone who will appreciate you and if all else fails what no i'm not saying that it's stupid i don't all right yeah fine i will all right okay and if all else fails, grab a Korok seed and go on a wild goose chase for some missing melodies. And if the missing melodies turn out to be just as uninterested as that special someone, at least you'll have a collection of seeds to show for it. Why? Anyways, hope you enjoyed. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, like button, comment, share wherever you share things. Got a nice little lovely video right here for you to check out and I'll catch you all later. Peace.